Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Med School Mondays with Promo. In case anyone forgot, I'm Promo. Promo stands for Professor Mohan. So what are we going to do today? Well, today we're going to talk about the adrenal gland. We're going to continue our discussion with the adrenal gland. This time we're going to focus on the medulla. Now, if you were here with us uh, in the last couple lectures, we really emphasize the adrenal cortex area. So in case you missed those lectures, definitely click on the links below. It'll take you back to the previous lectures. But today, like I said, the adrenal medulla. So the adrenal medulla, what do you want to know? You want to know the pathology. What can go wrong in the adrenal medulla? The main thing what you want to know for the USMLE is that tumors can arise in the adrenal medulla. So now you want to pay specific attention because if it's a child, children, the most common tumor that they will develop is called neuroblastoma. This we will discuss in next week's lecture. But for today, we're going to talk about the most common tumor that arises in the adrenal medulla for adults is referred to as pheochromocytoma. So that's today's discussion, pheochromocytoma. Now, I actually really enjoy teaching as well as when I was a medical student learning about the pheochromocytoma. Well, one thing is it rhymes with promo, sort of, right? Like pheo Chromo rhymes with promo, cytoma. Well, not all of it, but the middle portion definitely rhymes with promo. Anyways, what do you want to know about pheochromocytoma? The good thing is, again, although it's a very long term, a long name, there's a lot of questions that can be generated and those questions are easy marks for the USMLE step one. The first thing you want to remember is, is derived from chromaffin cells. These chromaffin cells arise from the neural crest. So definitely remember that if you see any other kind of cell types on the questions, that's not the answer. The answer is chromaffin cells. There's the 10 rule or the rule of 10s. What does that mean? 10% of these tumors are gonna be malignant. So if you wanna think of it the other way as well, think of it the other way. 90% of the tumors are gonna be non-malignant basically, right? 10% are gonna be extra adrenal. So that means most of them are gonna be located within the adrenal gland, but 10% of them are gonna be located outside of the adrenal gland. Bilateral, 10% are bilateral, meaning most of them are gonna be unilateral, only involving one adrenal gland. 10% of them are going to calcify, so again, most of them will not calcify, and 10% will target children. So of course, you know, it's, a, it's, not a, it's not common to target children, but every now and then it could target children as well, okay? So let's move along on this side. What exactly is pheochromocytoma doing? Pheochromocytoma is going to release all these catecholamines. Catecholamines are released when the patient is under stress. So what are the catecholamines? We got epinephrine, we got norepinephrine, and we got dopamine. Now all of these are contributing to our increase in heart rate, as well as an increase in blood pressure, right over here. Increased BP, increased heart rate. So patient who has pheochromocytoma, what you want to know is that it occurs in episodic spells. What does that mean to you? So of course, if I say episodic, or if I say in spells, that means there's gonna be times when the patient has the symptoms, and then the symptoms will go away. So basically, it will relapse and remit. What are some of the symptoms? Well, another rule we have here nicely generated for you is called the 5P rule, the 5P rule. Basically, it's just a nice uh, acronym for all the symptoms that a patient with pheochromocytoma will have. So a patient will have an increase in pressure. What kind of pressure? Of course, blood pressure. We know it's due to the catecholamine release. Increase in palpitations. What does that really mean? It means it feels like the patient is going to describe feeling like the heart is uh, trying to get out of the chest, like it's bumping and pounding really quickly, okay? So an increase in heart rate leads to the increase in palpitations. Again, due to the catecholamine release. We got an increase in sweat, so the patient's gonna look like they're very, very anxious. And this is important because you wanna rule out other conditions too. Anxiety, hyperthyroidism. So of course, what's a fancy way of saying increase in sweat? We say perspiration. The patient's gonna develop a lot of pain around their head and we know what that means. That's basically, we're seeing a headache. And the patient's gonna appear very pale in appearance, not looking too good. So we say pallor. So remember the five Ps for symptoms. In the labs, what are we gonna see in the labs? Of course, all these catecholamines can appear in both your urine as well as your plasma. And if you don't see the catecholamines, you wanna look out for the breakdown products. What are these breakdown products? We got VMA, which stands for Vanil Mendelic Acid, we got metanephrines and we got normetanephrines. So these are the breakdown products of these catecholamines. So definitely look out for that, okay? Lastly, or not lastly, but almost lastly, what is the treatment? Well, let me get on this side so you can see it properly. We got two main rules that you wanna wanna focus on for sure. The rule number one is we need to do medications as well as surgery, but you have to remember medications before surgery, okay? Now, what are these medications? That's the second rule. The second rule, definitely states is that there's two types of medications you're gonna use. You're gonna use alpha blockers and beta blockers. But you wanna make sure for sure, 
definitely use the alpha blockers first. So you're gonna use an irreversible alpha blocker. Most likely it's gonna be phenoxybenzamine. And you're gonna use that prior to using the beta blocker. Now why is that very important? You don't wanna induce the patient making them have a hypertensive crisis. So that's why alpha blocker first, then a beta blocker, and then you do surgery, okay? Keep that in mind. And lastly, what is this associated with? It's associated with many other conditions as well. Some of them you can learn in the genetic sections. The first one over here, NF1, that stands for neurofibromatosis type 1. The second one, VHL, stands for von Hippel-Lindau disease. And the third one, which we will cover in a couple, in a few lectures from today, is called multiple endocrine neoplasias type 2A and type 2B. So that's it guys, that's it. Lots of information behind me, but it's easy information. You definitely gotta understand pheochromocytoma, and that way you're gonna get all the marks on that use assembly regarding this topic. Next week, like I said in the beginning of the lecture, we're gonna talk about neuroblastoma, the most common adrenal medulla tumor in children. So until next week, I want you guys to give this uh, video a thumbs up. Definitely share the video with all your friends. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and make sure you guys have a great week. We will see you next week on Med School Mondays with Promo!